There's nothing I can say about Paul Klee that's not already been said or in the, the books. So I figured I would just come and take a look at the work. And uh, let's see what we think. Uh, Paul Klee has always been a huge inspiration to me, but I did not know that much about him. But I guess subconsciously through seeing his work all these years and being such an admirer of his work, I subconsciously um, did a lot of work like his because I love abstract art. So here's LACMA and we're just gonna go and take a look at the work. The museum opens at 11 and I know his name is pronounced Clay, but no matter how many times I say it, Paul Klee rings right in my ears. So uh, that's how I'm gonna say it. Modern art, 1900s to 1960s. So here we go, modern art galleries and uh, German Expressionism. Super exciting. I've been here a gazillion times. Because it's so fantastic. So I'll try to stay focused today since we are on full clay. Here's my Kandinsky. Room. But I think they might have had it in this gallery and the gallery is closed. That might be his work right there. I believe that's his work down on the ground there. I'm almost positive. Is this? Yeah, I'm almost positive. No, no, don't worry about it, sir. I'm almost positive that's Paul Clay on the floor there. Is that Paul Clay there? Do you know? It, it sure is. There it is. Two in the middle. Yeah, I came to do a paper on him for school, oh. and like, actually a video, and there he is. Fantastic. This one on that side, huh? Um, we have. Um, yeah, both, both the, the two in the center of the floor. Both wow. Like, oh, one that. is uh, called Lightning Strike from 1920, and the other is Figure for a Demonic Theater from 1920. It said that uh, Jackson Pollock was heavily influenced by, by Clay. Lines without form. Clay's uh, lesson one. I mean, you can see Clay's work all over, Pollock's work. Amazing. This is. Uh, Black and white, number 20, all on canvas. Mark Rothko was heavily 
influenced by clay. This is the uh, White Center. Which he had committed suicide, Rothko. Tragic. Pills and I believe cut himself. But what a magnificent piece of work. Joe Mira was also said to be very influenced by Paul Clay's work. Look at this. It's floating images and fish. And one of uh, Clay's lessons was study a fish tank. He would turn the light on and off in his classrooms uh, and have the students study the fish, the fish movement in this big aquarium. He had a big aquarium at his house as well when he would study from home. He would make his students do that. He would turn the lights on and off and then study the fish movement. So there's a spectacular Joe Miro, influenced by Paul Klee. Joan Miro, she's from Spain. Rupa figures oil on canvas. Amazing. They studied architecture as well. So I can only imagine how much his work was influenced by that time period where Paul Clay taught. Spectacular. This is the old man, Dushberg, New Netherlands. Amazing. Uh, Clay and Picasso are said to be opposites. They are from the same time period. And Clay could be said to be as influential as Picasso. But even myself, I studied Picasso art all the time. So, Clee studies from nature. He said all art comes from nature. He said at one time you could study nature enough where you might actually be creative. You know, I'm paraphrasing, but uh, that was what Clee said. All, all, all art comes from nature. And he was also a musician. He started, he started uh, with music, so his work is musical as well. Of course, this is Picasso. Geometric abstraction. It mentions the Bauhaus. Although geometric or hard edge abstraction has been explored by various artists in Europe early in the 20th century, particularly those associated with Eastern Europe, constructions the Bauhaus in Germany movement, including Mandy Renan. Calculate came forth. Amazing. So, in some way, these artists were influenced by Clay and Kandinsky through the, the, the Bauhaus movement. Isn't that spectacular? Just. You can see the thread of time, you know. Thank you, Professor, for this um, assignment because it gives me an opportunity to, to see the thread of, of uh, influence. In just one art museum. This is just Lachma. Fantastic. This is amazing. Annie Albers was taught by Klee in Bauhaus. And uh, she took a, a weaving class with Clay. And here's her work in, in Latmar. She taught at the famous school in North Carolina, the Black House College or whatever. But uh, how amazing. that she actually studied under Clay. He was so diverse and thought that art didn't have uh, specific names. Art was one, one. I am an artist, he would say. 
So this, this is, you know, he was musician, expressionism, surrealism, abstract. Clay was just, just, just a genius. Oh, how exciting. I found another work of Clay's, Clay's in uh, LACMA. This is uh, watercolor, graphite, pen. I don't want to see the reflections. You really you can't see. God, maybe this way's better. How exciting. It's a new exhibit in LACMA. And it's with the um, weaving, because as I said earlier, he's also a weaver. Taught weaving in Bauhaus. And uh, here's Kaczynski's work. Semicircle, it's called Semicircle. And I love his work so much. It's watercolor and ink on paper. So once again, Please work. It's, it's worth the study. Intense, intense. Such a beautiful museum. I'm so passionate about this place. And I'm so passionate about art. I just cry. It just takes my breath away. What a wonderful, just fluid tour through the museum, seeing Clay's work, the people that were influenced by Clay's work, students of Clay, all in, all in one museum. Can you imagine his work and his influence throughout the world? It's immeasurable. Thank you, Paul Clay.